thank you for joining us at Hope Lutheran Church for Worship Online. We are glad that you are here. And if you can do us a favor, if you can like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, it helps us do what? Oh. <laughs> Reach more people with the good news of Jesus Christ. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I've, I've been, I had a busy week because I had jury duty this week, and it's just been crazy, so I'm not really quite with it yet. <laughs> your mind's still in that courtroom, huh? No, it, it still is, You're, absolutely. And how about your angels? Oh, my gosh, a no-hitter this week. I can't believe a it. A no-hitter, a grand slam from uh, Otani. And I, well... I, Season's early. We're, I know. How about, how about your twins? <laughs> no, my twins are in first twins place. Too. I wish the season could end oh, right oh. now. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But I know a lot of you are looking forward to summer. And we have a lot of things going on here at Hope this summer. If you know kids in the Valley that are looking for something, I know my kids are. Here, watch this. So, Pastor Carl, are you going to be there for Water Day? Uh, water Day. It's 100 degrees. Why not? For every kid you sign up, they get two water balloons to throw at Pastor Carl. So let's get him drenched. Let's do it. <laughs> yes. And if you would like to help support Hope Lutheran Church in all the ways that we're reaching new people with Jesus Christ, there are three ways you can do so. One, you can mail in an offering to Hope Lutheran Church at 45900 Portola Avenue in Palm Desert, California, 92260. Also, you can text to give by taking out your smartphone and texting to 84321. And finally, the easiest and greatest way to give is... Online. Online at hopepd.org. There you'll find just not ways to give, but you're going to find out all the different things that are happening here at Hope. We are providing a lot of hope, uh, not just for the Valley, but for the world. So help support us there. Absolutely. Are you ready to worship? I'm ready. All right, I'm ready too. Counselor, take it away. All right. Our text says, he picks up after the washing of the disciples' feet, predicting his betrayal, and then revealing his betrayer, Jesus speaks of his glorification on the cross. This deep, complicated love of Jesus, even to death on the cross, will be the distinctive mark of Jesus' community. The good news for this, the fifth Sunday of Easter, comes from the book of John, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, by this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The good news of our Lord, praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be with you from God our Father and His only Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. When the Apostle John was an old man, his message was reduced to this. My little children love one another. What is clear throughout Scripture is that we Christians are to love one another because God in Christ first loved us. Here in a farewell address, Jesus is telling his disciples that they must obey a new commandment, love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. Little children want love one another. 
Our response to God and God's love for us is faith toward God and love toward one another. We hear what God has done for us in sending Jesus our Savior. We see Jesus crucified and risen, and we believe. And our response is, is faith. And we express that response in prayer, praise, and thanksgiving to God. Here Jesus reminds us that we should love the Lord our God with all our heart and all our mind and all our strength and love our neighbors as ourselves. As Martin Luther preached to his congregation, as there is no fire without heat and smoke, so there is no faith without love. For when through faith we know how dearly God loves us, we must gain a sweet and loving heart towards God. And this heart cannot stay by itself alone. It must flow forth and freely show its gratitude and love. But as God does not need our work and has not commanded us to do anything for him, but to praise and to thank him, the Christian makes haste to give wholehearted love toward the neighbor, serving and helping the neighbor. Here Luther is reminding us that the Lord asks two things of us, love of God and love of our neighbor. I had a seminary professor at Wartburg note that this command of Christ makes tolerance not enough. It may be good enough legally and politically, but it is not good enough for the one who did not say, tolerate your neighbor, but love your neighbor. We love because God first loved us. We love because Jesus commands us with a new commandment to have love for one another. We love because we have been loved in Christ, but we also love because it works. Even in war-torn Ukraine, doctors are attending to wounded, injured Russian prisoners of war. These Russian soldiers are encrusted with mud and blood and excrement. Their wounds are sorely inflamed, and they are left uncared for by their own fellow Russian soldiers. The Ukrainians take pity on them, bathe their wounds, and give them food to eat. They care for their enemies who have starved and beaten them, killed their comrades. Then they exchange them for fellow Ukrainian soldiers who too are being held prisoners of war by Russia. God broke down hatred and conquered it with love and concern. Love can work miracles and break down barriers because it is truly the power of God. St. John writes, Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God and it works in our schools and workplaces and homes and families. Sarah came from a family where there, there was little love. Criticism, fighting, ridicule, and violence were the rule. Never spoken were the words, I love you, or I'm sorry, forgive me. Then Sarah found a new self and faith through Christ. She met Jesus and she began to act differently at home. She would stop in the middle of a fight and ask to be forgiven. She began to say, I love you, Mom. I love you, Dad. She began giving hugs and began returning blessings for curses, compliments for ridicule, forgiveness when wrong. And over a period of two years of giving blessings to parents and siblings, the entire family met Jesus and gave themselves to his love. Jesus commands us to love because it will change our lives and the lives of others. And love becomes a mark to the world that we are God's people, that we do believe what we say we believe. Jesus gives this new commandment to love because he's going from the world back to his heavenly kingdom. Jesus tells his disciples that they cannot go with him. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. In the meantime, Jesus leaves for us his commandment to love as we await our final redemption. This world is not heaven, but by loving God and our neighbor, we can build a little kingdom, even while we wait for God's coming rule. We can break down barriers between people, between races and genders, ages and abilities, political opinions and ideologies. We can show in our lives that we believe what we say we do. Even here at Hope Lutheran Church, 
We are a community that loves one another, supports one another, sometimes challenges one another because we love one another. Being rich or poor, young or old, gay or straight, Republican or Democrat or independent, these are human things. But in Christ, we are a new creation, God's own people. We can be like the early Christians who showed their faith in the risen Christ by loving one another. They were described to the Roman Emperor Hadrian in just that way. They love one another. They never fail to help widows and they save orphans from those who would harm them. If they have something, they give freely to those who have nothing. They don't consider themselves brothers and sisters in the usual sense, but instead brothers and sisters through the Spirit of God. Bishop George Appleton was an Anglican bishop of Jerusalem. He became good friends with a Jewish professor of New Testament at Hebrew University. And this Jewish scholar told Appleton that he prayed for Christians every day. He said, I pray that you Christians may be more like your Jesus, that your love for one another will be made more plain. Think about it. The marks of love were plain on Jesus. He showed his disciples his wounded hands and feet and side. Even in the glories of his resurrect, his risen body, the marks of Jesus' suffering and love were still plain. Our love for God and our love for neighbor may leave their marks on us too. When we give to the mission of the work of our church and the ELCA, bring food to stock Hope's needy person's pantry and tell others about Jesus, these are the marks and signs of our faith. When we put the best construction on, on what our neighbor says or does, when we give a person a second chance or third, we are showing the mark of Christian love. When we watch our, our cutting remarks or our gutter language, when we behave a bit differently at work or school or with friends, a bit more open, caring, more accepting, more loving, especially of people who are different from us, then we are showing the effects of our faith. Love is from God and of God. It is not mere emotion or feeling or sentiment. Last Sunday was Mother's Day. Think of the love your mother who changed your diapers and bandaged your knees, even when she didn't like what you were doing. She still loved you very much. Think of all the people in your life who have loved you very much, even when you weren't very lovable. You see, biblical love is not all hearts and flowers, but actions and deeds. It is loving because Christ first loved us. It is loving because Christ commands us to love. It is loving to build a little kingdom here as we wait for God's great kingdom to come. It is love which changes hearts and minds and deeds. It changes schools and communities and even congregations. Love changes lives. Little children love one another. I think old St. John got it right. You and I can too. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and this opportunity to come into worship and to praise your name. We thank you for reminding us of love, love, love. That's what it's all about. You've called us to make a difference through the way we love and the way we care. So bless us in all our endeavors. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, we're going to hear a word from Gisa. She's got a, a wonderful project going for the women of the church. She's going to do some painting and have some fun. Hi, beautiful ladies of hope. My name is Gisa, and I just want to remind you of a fun event coming up at the end of the month. On Friday, May 27th at 6.30 in the Hope Center, we're going to have a girls' paint night out where someone is coming, guiding us in painting a beautiful painting. Basically, just a fun evening for some fun fellowship. Bring your own beverage. We'll provide the snack. $20 to register either online on our website under events or you can email me at giza at hopepd.org or if you have any other questions you can always call our church office and ask them but I really hope that you will um, register and that we will get to spend that evening together hopefully we'll see you on the 27th Let the whole creation Oh
those to whom the arts belong and their voices to the song, kings of knowledge and of law, to the glorious and all draw, all who work and all who wait, sing the Lord is Thank you, Pastor Carl, for that wonderful message. Now let's continue our worship, confessing our faith, found in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now let us praise our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant to you his everlasting peace. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. And once again, if you'll like and subscribe to our channel, it helps us reach more people with the good news of Jesus Christ. So hit that subscribe button right now. And now, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.